Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa Public Television Sports brings you college wrestling. The fourth ranked Arizona Sun Devils versus the third ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Hello everybody, I'm Doug Brown and this is our final Sunday afternoon college meet of the season. Next Friday night on 9 o'clock, same day coverage of Ohio State here at Iowa. And then on Saturday night, that big traditional Iowa at Iowa State, same night coverage at 9 o'clock. But Tim Johnson, this is a big one too because these two teams could just as well be numbers one and two as three and four. A lot different than last year. The scene has changed. There's a whole new look at the top. With Penn State ranked number one, that's the first time in two years that any team other than the Hawkeyes have been number one. And with Nebraska, number two, perhaps the highest they've ever been ranked. I think there's a little changing of the guard, Doug. Well, you can see right there why Penn State is tops because of the balance. Nine of ten wrestlers ranked. Nine out of ten. And you can bet the Iowa Hawkeye coaches looked up at those nine and said, hey, we may have three number one ranked, but we've got some holes to fill. And that's why the Steiner shift. Well, yeah, the shift at 134 and 142. There's still some mystery weights, but not 134 and 142. They've brought Troy Steiner, national champion of 142, down to 134, and you can bet they plan on him winning a title there. And at 142, they brought Lincoln McElravey, a freshman, into the lineup. It's not that unusual for a freshman, true freshman, to be wrestling for Gable, but what is unusual is to bring someone this late in the season out of a redshirt year, and you can bet it's not for a test. It's because they think Lincoln McElravey's good enough to place really high. And that's absolutely true. Now, I'll tell you, Arizona State has some problems in the lineup, too. They have one more problem than usual. That's because highly ranked freshman 177-pounder Pat Lynch stayed home. He's injured. He'll be back for the tournaments, but not today. That means there's a new man at 150, Jeff Thyler, and then three wrestlers moved up a weight. So you'll see some interesting matches here today. Leroy Smith inherited this team from Bobby Douglas as he came to Arizona State, and he has several candidates for top champion ability in this team. Number one ranked Ray Miller at 67 will wrestle at 77 tonight. And then this powerful wrestler at 126 pounds, this is Sean Charles. And this is how he beat Kent Stryker of Iowa in the national dual meets three weeks ago with powerful moves like this. He beat uh, Stryker 12 to four. He is one of the best candidates for repeating that we've had in the country. He's the big man at 126 pounds. In fact, you'll see five number one ranked wrestlers today in this meet between Arizona State and Iowa next on Iowa Public Television. Did y'all watch Tube last night? Nah, I was booking it. Heavy loading worms, man. Ranked. And Iowa, number three in a series that Iowa leads nine wins and one loss and one draw. Iowa won this year in the national duels by that score you see, 25 to 14. The matchups are interesting today because we said there are some Arizona State people up away. You see Troy Steiner down at 134. There's McElravia, one of the best young high school prospects ever to come into college at ranks. Tonight at 142. And that Jeff Thyler at 150 is from Iowa. The upper are interesting too. This looks like it'll be narrow at 177 tonight. You know John Osendorp and uh, Joe Sherritt both ranked in the upper weights for Iowa. 118 pounds. It's going to be Nunez for Arizona State against Chad Zapato, the number one ranked man at this weight from the University of Iowa. A senior from Mystic, Iowa, Centerville High School. That's Mickey Nunez from Apollo High School in Phoenix, Arizona. He's a senior on this Arizona State team. And Iowa hopes to get out fast. This is the place where Iowa is ranked in the early weights. And Sean Charles will be the favorite at 126 for the Sun Devils. Chad Zapital has not been beaten this year in 13 matches. He finished second two years in a row in the NCAAs. He hopes to be number one this year. Action, gentlemen, let's go. Well, one of the things about Zapital, we've seen him for a long time, he's hard to penetrate, hard to get past the arms right there. See, he does such a nice job on first-line defense, gets those elbows into the shoulders of his opponent, very hard to penetrate Chad Zapital. They met in the national dual meet, and in fact, Zapital pinned Nunez. So you can see the Hawks are hoping to get a big one in this one if they possibly can, and Leroy Smith 
who says we are not going to roll over in this uh, Carver Hawkeye arena. He thinks his team's going to do well. Well, and this weight's one of the important ones, 118, 150, um, uh, the heavy weight. Those are important, Coach Smith said, as far as not getting huge um, uh, points against them. And obviously, they're not favored at all in those weights. Mickey Nunez uh, starts slow this year. He's actually had very few matches. He wasn't wrestling in the first part of the year because another wrestler, uh, Sc uh, Scott Schletter, was there. There's a little duck action. And Zapatos just continues to drive, but Nunez got out of bounds and avoided the score. He, Nunez did all right there also on defense. He got some good hip action in there and was able to avoid the takedown. As I was saying, Nunez is probably just getting some conditioning back. Let's set the official here today. That's Chad Crow. You're hearing Chad Crow from St. Paul, Minnesota, who's been a number of times the referee in the matches that we've carried on the air. Nunez has been able to avoid Zappel so far, but hasn't uh, been able to score himself. Here comes Zappel in on the legs. 2 nothing. A takedown with about two minutes gone in the first period. First period, three minutes long. Second period, two. The third period, two, as you know. And the first period starts on the feet. Now Zapital goes to work on top, trying to turn his man over, which he was able to do in their rematch, in their earlier match. There's Leroy Smith. Uh, he's been a top uh, USA wrestling coach of the uh, Olympic team for the past three years, and obviously one of the very important Olympic uh, profiles is Dan Gable, head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And, and so you'll see on the left there, Royce Alger, who has uh, been long associated with this Iowa program, and now an international wrestler. Two to one as the Iowa wrestler Zappel lets Nunez out, try to take him down again. Now he goes to work with that strong wizard against Nunez, sort of uh, half penetration, you might say. Well, Nunez came pretty close in there to getting nice penetration, and Chad Zappel just at the last moment was able to hip out and get some good, like you said, a good wizard action. And you can see that Nunez has a little bit of advantage with the height and probably a little leverage uh, advantage if he was able to use it. But that's easier said than done against Chad Zapital, runner-up last year in Nationals, two-time runner-up. Nunez bounced down for a low single shot. Here he comes again. He's in on a double at the end of the period. And Nunez put on a good first period to come behind. He's scrappy. This is what happened the first time they met. This was taken at when we were at the National Duels in Lincoln, there you see Zapital turning Nunez over, and this pin happened in a hurry, boom, like that. Just a power move right there by Zapital, and like I said, uh, Nunez coming off a slow start, didn't wrestle the first semester, probably a lot better condition than he was three weeks ago, Doug. This could be a different match. Nunez is on the bottom starting the second period. He had his choice about where he wanted to go, and he went down. An international start by Zapital to let Nunez out. It's 2-2, but Zapital's very confident about takedowns. Both senior wrestlers here, a lot of experience between the two of them. But it is 2-2, right on the edge. Now, the Iowa fans, you can imagine, they don't like that. They see Nunez with his back to the black out there, and they... Morning red. And that's why the warning went. Chad Crow didn't care much for it either. Well, you're not supposed to do that in wrestling, but I'll tell you what a cardinal sin is, and that's doing it on the, in, in Iowa Carver Hawkeye Arena when you're not a Hawkeye. So we're back out in the center again. It's 2-2. There's a patented snap there by uh, Zapital. He's gotten very good at it. Very, very tough to stop. But one thing that I've noticed about Chad Zapital is he's been getting some good low-level attacks this year. In fact, his first takedown was in on the legs, and that's a good sign yeah. for Chad Zapital. He's been injured with that neck injury, and he could do just about nothing but snap for a, a year or so, maybe more than that. Here he is on a low leg. Well, but again, Nunez is on the out-of-bounds line. He's actually out of bounds. They're all there. He got pancaked. He could stick him right here. Zapital pancaked him. Watch Chad Crow's hand. If he slaps him at, it's all over. A lot of time. There it is. Well, I'll tell you what. You're the visiting team. You're Leroy Smith. That's not how you want to get started. A pancake. Whip over there by Chad Zapital. And Iowa goes out 
six to nothing. That's the way they wanted to start. Off. Right here is where Chad Zappel has got the overhook and the pancake to the back. It wasn't long before the refs slapped the mat for the pin, and boy, what a start. That's why you need a 118-pounder with power like Chad Zappel. 2-2 match turned into a into a fall in a big hurry. 6-0 lead for the Hawkeyes. Now Sean Charles is coming out for Arizona State against Eric Aylin, a sophomore from Belle Plaine, Iowa for the Hawks. And Charles, who is 16-1 this year, top ranked at this weight, figures he wants to turn it the other way. I'm sure he's saying he's got to have a big match to even this up. He's in on the leg. Charles looks like he's all business here. There it is, 2-0 on a double leg. Well, he got in, and I'll tell you what, he got in on a single, changed off to a double, and really put a lot of pressure on Elon, was able to drive through him. There's Leroy Smith, concerned already after the first, but he's got his number one ranked Sean Charles in there to try to even up the score. Optional start. That next one, too, ought to be interesting because one, three, Troy Steiner, three. there's the escape for Elon, it's 2-1 Charles, because Troy Steiner will be up against a two-time All-American, or a, uh, an All-American from last year who's ranked Three third. And that's a powerful move by Charles to go up four to one. Charles is a great story. He was a walk-on out of Arizona high school system. He walked onto the Arizona State pro uh, program, and all he's done now is become a three-time All-American. And along with Ray Miller, he and Ray could be the first four-time All-Americans for the Arizona State Sun Devils. A walk-on turned into a four-time All-American. Not bad, huh, Doug? Not bad. They went out of bounds there with about 2.19 to go in this first period. What Charles, I mean by walk-on, of course, up. is uh, he didn't come in as a sought-after wrestler, didn't have a scholarship, had to pay his own way to school, and I'll bet it didn't take long for him to get a scholarship, probably his sophomore year after he was an All-American his freshman year. Well, he was fifth in the NCAA as a sophomore. Oh, nice low level, right to the ankle. Real low pick there by You'd have Sean to pick Charles. up a piece of mat to get any lower than that. 6-2. In favor of Charles. Eric Aylin, as you remember, there's Charles, who uh, comes from Santa Rita High School in Tucson, Arizona. One of the best things ever to happen to Arizona State Wrestling. He lets Aylin go, 6-3. Speaking of one of the best things, one of the best things ever to come out of Belle Plaine, Iowa, is Eric Aylin, the only three-time state champion they've ever had. There's that, there's that low pick again by Charles, that low single leg. Turns it to a double. He doesn't have the takedown yet because uh, Aylin's across the back. I'll tell you what he's able to do, though. He's able to take the hips away from Aylin. And to be a good wrestler at Division One, you've got to have great hips. And he's oh, taking now Aylin is in trouble on his back. And he's getting near fall points. And Charles has him on his back for a, a three count. For a, he only got two. He didn't have five seconds, but he still got a near fall, including the takedown. So it's now. 10 to 3. Well, Sean Charles, as you can see, he's one of the biggest 126 pounders out there. Actually, I there's no question he'd be one of the top 334 pounders. He's that big. And uh, he has a size advantage over Eric Galen. And um, he certainly also is uh, quite skilled, as we've talked about, doing the job out there tonight. Able to cut down to 126 pounds. 10 to 4 now after the escape. First period, a big first period, and we still have 40 seconds to go. Charles leads 10 to four. Ranked number one, he's only lost once this year. In fact, he ran into back-to-back -back brothers. He's beaten Tony Perler, the uh, highly rated oh, wrestler. There's a takedown, two, another one. Kind of a highly shot rated, that rated wrestler out of Nebraska, but his brother, Nick Perler, wrestles for Oklahoma State. Well, Sean Charles wrestled in the National Wrestling Coaches Association All-Star Meet one night beat Tony Perler, traveled to Oklahoma State, lost to his brother, Nick Perler, and he was just, according to Coach Smith, and there's Coach Melvin Douglas, according to the coaches, he was just a little competition tired. But he is certainly the number one ranked wrestler, and deservingly so. Melvin Douglas and Leroy Smith. The Arizona State coaching staff, here comes Sean Charles. Boy, he hated to lose that. He hadn't lost in a while. Last year, he lost four matches last year, and all of them were to Terry Brands. Well, I, I'll tell you, the Iowa fans have seen Sean Charles for a long time. We've had him on our telecast before. I remember when he was a freshman. 
Now, Aylen kept that front headlock all the way through the roll there, and he was able to, to uh, fight off Charles' lower level attack. Still 10, 12 to five after the escape. Five takedowns for Charles and a near fall. Aylen had his choice, he takes down. I think what's interesting here, Doug, could be is that um, Sean Charles isn't used to a same day weigh-in and he cuts a lot of weight and he doesn't really do it all that well. He, he, he bounces and that, what that means is he lets his weight fluctuate a little more than the coaches would like. It'll be interesting to see if conditioning comes into play here. We'll see, it's 12 to six, a six point lead. Remember in the opening match, Chad Zapital pinned Mickey Nunez, repeating his feat of the first match between the two in the national duels. In four minutes, 22 seconds, and Iowa leads by six. See, but already his, his penetration isn't there. Aylen, for the first time, was able to ward it off with some good hips. Sean Charles didn't get past Aylen's arm. Now we're I'll coming you, back to the center. Does the look a little different. The tide is turning right here. With a minute 20 to go in the second period. And I think Aylen has a sense of it. You see him being a little more aggressive now, and even in his stance as he comes across. There's really no margin for error here uh, as far as Aylen is concerned. He's got a good position. He's got, a, he's got lots of time. He just needs to score. And right there, but John Charles was able to get in on the legs and take the hips and away. Score. And there's the air I was talking about that he didn't have to give. But when you score when you're tired, that's what champions are made of. 14 to 6 on a double leg low takedown by Sean Charles of the Sun Devils. Referee Chad Crow sends him back to the center again. 14 to 6. Do you think? I wonder now. See, riding time a minute 19. See, look at that. He was in behind both knees. Then he drove through to the hips and he took the hips away. And like I said, hips are really important. They're used to counter takedowns. They're used to uh, break down the wrestlers. If you don't have good hips, you're not going to be a good Division I wrestler. You can bet when the coaches are out on the recruiting trail, they look at a lot of things and one of them is hips. Another shot there by Sean Charles. He's made that work twice. So he's looking good in there in the second period. Second wind, I think, 16 to seven. And he now has locked up, almost had a cradle locked up. 16 to seven. What escape on your trail? There's the escape. 16-8. He has riding time, too, and remember that at the end of the match. Well, Eric Aylen would like to get a takedown right here and steal two points away to get to keep in this match. Otherwise, it's going to be tough in the third period. Riding time, if you remember, which we don't have in the high school meets, comes. A point goes to the man if he has a minute more time and advantage than his opponent. And, and Charles has been on top for a minute 37 more than Aylen. Second period end, 16-8. And Charles goes down. Chad Crow Go ahead. flew in again for this meet, his own plane, and uh, then he flies back to St. Paul right afterward. This is said to be Sean Charles' weakness on the bottom. The Arizona State coaches have worked very hard with it. How do you be a national champion when you don't have a lot of strength in the bottom? Well, he's been tough enough to get up, but whenever he's had trouble, it's been here. He's just warm. And, and Aylen is tough. He's a cranker on top right here, and it's a good thing Charles filled up all those points with takedowns, actually. Now, look, at he's losing his hips. He can't be sagging down like that. Aylen has the legs in. Referee Chad Crow calls a stalemate position in which neither man can improve his position. There's Hunter Rawlings, the president of uh, University of Iowa, an avid wrestling fan and supporter. Charles' seven takedowns is the answer in this meet for Arizona State. And when you think about seven takedowns, he has more takedowns against Aylen than most uh, teams get against Iowa. A minute and 20 to go here in the match. Here comes Charles. Two, one. Oh yeah, you got one. 
Got that Granby two. position on the back, and he has Aylin now not only reversed, but in a near fall position for two. two and that makes it 20 to eight. Watch ahead. You know what Brands used to do? Terry Brands used to break Sean Charles in this position, the top position, and that's what Coach Smith would like for Charles to get more proficient at, is that breaking his opponent on top instead of just riding. So it's 20 to nine. That's a major decision territory. If a man wins by more than eight points, his team gets four for a decision rather than just three on the team score. 49 seconds to go in the match. Charles against Aylin. Offense from there, let's go. You hear Chad Crow saying he wants somebody to do something here. You just can't look. There's a double leg by Charles. He's still able to get through there. Nothing yet. We're still neutral. Well, he does. He does a still real neutral. nice job in still there. Neutral. Of changing his level and putting Two. pressure on the opponent and really blowing through the guy. He changes his level real well. Puts a lot of pressure on the hips, as I said, three, and that neutral. really takes away someone's offense. Oh, it's 22. If he gets a takedown here, he uh, with his does he have riding time? Yes, he could. He could theoretically have a technical fall. This would be a technical fall, and it will be because that 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 with riding time makes it 15 points difference. A technical fall, five points for Arizona State. Charles hung in there, did a nice job. He didn't, he didn't break, he didn't lose his conditioning. He was able to hang in there, and Eric Aylin gave him a tussle, but Sean Charles is the number one ranked wrestler in the nation, and he's showed why tonight. So it's six to five now, Iowa over Arizona State. But Charles did what he had to do. He got his team more than the minimum points there, because they're gonna need him. Now here comes Troy Steiner. Looking a little thin. Well, he's down at 134 for the first time. Looks looks pretty good to me. And well, he's lean and mean, and that's what the coaches want for him to continue to uh, get mean. And uh, he's going to wrestle internationally at 136 and a half, so they don't feel like this is really that unusual. He's down to the weight that he wants to make the Olympic team at in three, four years. But notice the ranking of Marco Sanchez. He was an All-American. He finished third in the NCAA's last year. He was a Pac-10 champion his junior year, his sophomore year. And he is a toughie. He's from San Jose, California, Independence High School. Of course, Troy's only loss coming against John Fisher, who almost made the Olympic team at the expense of John Smith. Um, in the finals of the Midlands, he lost to John Fisher, who's a non-collegian. He's not lost to a collegiate uh, wrestler this year. Troy Steiner has been a dominant wrestler. He lost once this year 21 meets 21 wins he has eight pins offense guys come on sanchez's uh problem this year and throughout his career has been consistency and last year he found a way to place in the ncaa oh, nice double leg by sanchez yeah. it was a nice Man, and steiner had to give the position up you know he's given that position up a few times yes. this year we've the seen a takedown we've seen it happen it's like he it takes him just a little while to get his motor running Again. And you can bet that Coach Smith has probably told Marco Sanchez that, hey, this is our opportunity. Here's that double. He almost locks it completely up behind. He drives through, takes the hips away, and is able to come with the two. And I'm sure that Coach Smith is saying, this is the first couple of times down for Troy Steiner. Let's get him now because he probably doesn't have his 34-pound shape yet. Sanchez riding. Well, now... Leroy Smith doesn't call it right. That's interesting. It? We can talk about that throughout the match. I, in fact, I'm interested in your perspective, uh, perspective from that, but he just doesn't even use the word right. He uh, uses the word breakdown and turn because riding is a very negative connotation. It just talk, it, it seems passive, inactivity, you know, and stalling. Look at this tough front headlock by Steiner. He's trying to come around with it. He, did, he uses it differently than lots of wrestlers. Most people don't come around with that headlock, but he does, and he just scores. So let me ask you, Doug, should there be writing time point given it in college? What do you think? I, I, I change my mind every once in a while. <laughs> and I think you probably do, too. Yeah, we got to. In fact, you know, you talk well, here you see Troy Steiner and his pet position up on top. In this country. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Leroy Smith 
He comes from the international game a lot lately, but he really has a good attitude about the college game. He likes that idea of turning people and break, breaking them down and turning them. We've been talking about the bar arms and the kinds of things that we've seen this year, and he doesn't like the idea of just getting up there and, and not knowing how to turn people and make them and make them go over. Well, see, we do. We have turning points, right? Right. But as soon as you have riding points, it is. It's like you're rewarding someone yeah. for just floating. And so I think he's got a good point. Yeah, I, right. don't, I, I think, you know, college uh, might be better off without riding time points. But it's, it's one of those that's going to be an argument for the ages. Three to two in favor of Steiner with 20 seconds to go. And he's put uh, Sanchez flat on his face. Maybe right here, Doug, is an example of if the referee would call a stalemate about 10 seconds faster than he just did, we wouldn't have a problem with riding. Yeah. Troy Steiner is getting up close to the top of the list in career wins at the University of Iowa. We're going to show you a, a look at the top win producers in all the history of the university program. And Troy Steiner is right, moved right up there close to the top. That's the end of the first period, three to two Steiner. Green takes down. Steiner will pick the down position. There it is. Barry Davis has won the most. And you see Troy Steiner just about, if he wins this match, he'll tie Terry Brands for fourth place. If you just joined us, it's Iowa Public Television's coverage of Arizona State at Iowa. The three numbers, three and four teams, Iowa and Arizona State. See, Marcus Sanchez likes to use that two-on-one and look out, come out to the side. That's his bread and butter. And if he can't get to work, if he can't get that to work, he's not going to get anything else to work on Troy Steiner because that's his bread and butter, that two-on-one working a tilt. Steiner comes out. Four to two now. The point went to Steiner for the escape. And how much time? A minute and a half to go. Second period. They're back on their feet. Each man has a takedown. Sanchez got the first one. Sanchez. Well, there's a warning Man, against go. Sanchez. Stay in there. Now Steiner has the two on one. That's the two arms on one of his opponent's arms. The Russian tie up it used to be when we when first saw it. I think that was about the first place anybody used it, wasn't it? Now here comes Sanchez in on the legs, but a good wizard by Nope. Steiner on the edge stops that, no score. Four to two, Steiner. Well, good, strong move by Steiner there. And one of the accomplishments or one of the things that they saw, see, you can see Sanchez, very strong upper body, but so is Steiner at 134 now, and he wasn't that big a 142 pounder. 35 seconds to go in the second period. Troy Steiner, you're seeing him for the first time down at 134 pounds. Looks like something happened to Troy Steiner's head. There appears to be some blood there. I think that uh, normally they ought to stop it if Chad Crow sees it, but he doesn't see it. It's on his right temple. Scrape or something, and we'll... McElravey will be coming up in the next match, the first-year man right out of high school. Here comes... Uh, uh, here's a double warning, oh, a, double, a double stall, and that means a point for Steiner because Sanchez had already been warned. There's Lincoln McElravey. Well, now all I have left is a purple elephant. I've never seen a five-time state champion before until now. And, and <laughs> Okay, how did it happen? Well, he won it in eighth grade. In South Dakota, you can uh, win the uh, state championship or you can compete in eighth grade, and he won it five years in a row. That's the first five-time state champion I've ever personally seen. That's quite an accomplishment. So it's five to two, the point in that uh, double stall went to Steiner because he, his opponent had already been warned. Steiner. This is strength against strength, you know. One of uh, Sanchez's strength is his strength and obviously that is Troy's right now. Troy Steiner, now he's got the front headlock, that's what he likes. Brings his man right down tight to the mat. If he can do it, he was able to score his one takedown with that move. Steiner has Offense, some low-level attacks on. as well as his front headlock, and he has a variety of attacks. He's go. actually gotten a little better than last year. 
but everybody's shooting for you when you're the returning national champion. We have just a little over a minute to go in the third period. So you need to keep Steiner on the, on, on the feet and off the mat. If you can keep Steiner off the mat and away from your legs, you know, you've neutralized him. And so this is the, you know, he's got a lead right now. But Sanchez has wrestled him close by not allowing him to work too hard on top on the mat and keep him on the feet, giving him a chance yet. And you notice that Sanchez, when it was his turn, did not want to go under. Either. No, no, no. You stay. If you stay on the mat uh, when you wrestle Terry Steiner, you play right into his hands. So there's strategy going on here. There have been two takedowns, one for each man, but uh, Steiner's been able to escape twice. And the other point guys, came on a penalty. Now here they are. They're, uh, on, now guys, it's a penalty. Double one. penalty. Red, your next violation is a two-pointer. You heard what Chad Crow said. They're in on it now. What he wants to do is finish it, keep his head on the outside against Steiner. You don't want to stop there. But a good wizard by Steiner. That good overhook. wizard. And he's going to make it through the period with this. And it'll end right here. No riding time. Tough win. At 134 for Troy Steiner, 6-3. Over Marco Sanchez, you'll see Sanchez again in the Nationals. He finished third last year. The team score, Iowa 9, Arizona State 5 after three matches. There's Lincoln McElravey. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people said a lot of things about this young man. He's a true freshman, finally brought off red shirt. He lost his first match at Northwest against Northwestern and apparently the coach said he had a lot of pressure on his mind but this is one of the best prospects Dan Gable thinks he's ever had well obviously he feels he can do well or he would have brought him out of redshirt especially in February and he was 12 and 1 he's beat Tory Jackson in the Northern Open at 150 pounds now he's down at 142 and lost like you said the first time out but that has a lot to do psychologically and the kind of pressure you put on yourself when you're inserted. His opponent on, is Steve St. John. Right Come on. For There's Arizona State wrestlers, that's a famous name, St. John. Dan St. John, two-time national champion a few years ago, now wrestling internationally and going to vie for a, an Olympic spot in Offense, a few years. Gentlemen, let's go. This Steve St. John's tough. He's a freshman. We saw him go one nothing against in the, in the national duels against Troy Steiner. We sure did, and he's got tremendous defense. He is really hard to score on. I'd be surprised if this is a high-scoring match. Freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, St. Joseph High School in Cleveland. I see McElravey on the two-on-one. He wants to turn it into a trip, you see, but uh, it happened right on the edge. There's nowhere to go. They've used a minute. Inside trip for St. John, a nice one, and he scores with it, two to nothing. That's a nice move, an inside-out trip right there. And he, he's not going to have anything to do with staying on the mat. Now, I think St. John's one of those high-percentage move type of person, and he'll protect the lead. There he goes. Two to one now after that escape. Interesting match. Really, here are two fine young freshman wrestlers. When you've got defense as good as Steve St. John, and you get the first takedown, you got a lot going for you. So right here, McElravey has to do something very difficult, and that's a score on somebody that's very difficult to score on. Offense, guys, get to work. Let's go. What do you think's going through young Mr. McElravey's mind here? Oh, and a beautiful duck under. He went all the way to the floor and came around, slid around behind, actually. Well, you know, he answered your question. <laughs> Out of bounds, though, and it was not a takedown. He lost his first match coming into the varsity lineup after wrestling uh, in red shirt as a not uh, unattached. And here comes another duck under Steve John the other way. Anybody scored yet? No. Yes. No. No. There it is. A takedown for St. John. Quite a scramble, and it's four to two now after the escape. Now see, that's good hips by St. John right there. What he doesn't do, 
as well as uh, Coach Smith would like him to do is to counterattack. Once you stop the man, now score. But what McElroy needs to do is get in here and have some success right now. He needs to, he needs to hit a little closer, not take lunging uh, shots. And there's the Iowa Brain Trust right there saying, come on, let's get in there, McElroy, and uh, do some damage. He wrestles like a, a, a brand's a very rough house type of style, but now he needs to execute. Talking about McElroy. He has only eight seconds left in the first period to make up a two point deficit here. 4-2 in favor of Steve St. John, who's been sharing time at 142 pounds. Iowa, End of the first period. Over. Now uh, McElroy gets the choice. What's he going to do? Green takes down, Red's choice. You know, it's under. a mental thing, too, Doug. When you know that you're going to redshirt all year, you don't have that competitive mental edge by thinking about how to win the NCAAs. And all of a sudden, he's only been thinking about this for a week and a half or so, probably. And it takes a while to get into that type of mode of thinking. St. John really wasn't interested in, in uh, Matt wrestling with him. When as soon as McElribby came to his feet, Steve St. John let him go. Four to three, St. John. He has the only two takedowns, and McElravey hasn't really gotten in there yet. Once on the edge of the mat, but out of bounds. Four three. Minute and a half to go. In the second period, it's Arizona State at Iowa. Over Iowa Public Television with Tim Johnson. I'm Doug Brown. We're at 142 pounds. Two freshmen here. Well, obviously, uh, Coach Gable would like to have McElroy ahead right now. But when you look at the situation that he's in right now, it's good uh, preparation for the NCAAs, the Big Ten. Now, this is the kind of matches he's going to have, and he needs to be able to execute, come from behind, do some pressure moves. And so there, you can turn this into a positive and say, okay, let's see what he's made out of, and he's in the situation. Good defense by Steve St. John. Which we knew he had, and he's showing it right now. Keeps Mac good position. McElravey has not been able to, go, to dominate him here physically. Offense, offense. And so St. John still leads 4-3. And uh, McElravey's a little bit scattered here. Uh, well, scattered it's been again. a while since St. John took an offensive shot right here. He's not giving a lot to McElravey, but McElravey's trying to do something. That's the important thing. There's the front headlock for McElravey. He's looking for a trip to go with it. Warning. Yeah, oh, there's, there's a, a warning point. against St. John and a takedown for McElravey. And you know, you got to give a lot of credit to McElravey there for keeping the pressure on. Right here, he's got the underhook, and he's got drops down to the ankle, comes around for the double leg from behind, gets a two. And he leads 5-4 with 10 seconds to go in the second period. They're on the scoreboard, it's 6-4, so there must have been a... There must have, have been an escape. Yes, there is an escape given to John, St. John. Well, right now, Steve St. John has wrestled in spurts, and hey, it's both hurt and helped him. He's been able to score when he wanted to, but he's given up when he got a little lazy right there. I'm sure Coach Smith saw that, and was, that's what he was saying. You got to go, go, go all the time. You can't stop. So at six to five, the uh, extra point came on a on a penalty. And out goes St. John to tie the score 6-6 in the third period. So here it comes. Right now, if McElroy can get the pressure on him right now, we're going to see St. John get called for stalling if he can't turn it into a takedown, if he can't get around. McElroy, if he's working inside, so he's pummeling, he's trying to work for the inside, he's trying to create something. Minute and a half to go. An important match at 142 pounds for Lincoln McElravey and Steve St. John. Scoreboard has it 6-6. There's a, 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 a too far out for the high crotch that Lincoln McElravey was attempting to work, but he's still doing the moving, and there it is. There's the penalty against St. John. 
Seven to six. So McElravey leads with a minute to go. St. John, who had two takedowns in the first period, one on a trip and one on a scramble. Go up. A good scramble going on right there. It's a good match right here. 7-6, McElravey. McElravey can do a lot for the future and the support of these fans. If he can pull out a win right here, he'll have several thousand people giving him a big, rousing ovation. 40 it's seconds to go. Oh, that St. John just forced his way into McElravey against the two-on-one and cleared up the situation a little bit, but he didn't score. Right, you can tell it's the third period right here. Duck under. Because he's not able to get as tight. McElravey's able to come around. Good counter, but I think it's going to happen out of bounds. No score. McElravey oh, needs to keep the pressure on right now in these last 20 seconds. 20 seconds to go. We're at 142 pounds between two freshmen, Lincoln McElravey and the black from Iowa, Steve St. John of Arizona State. St. John can slip you. He can duck under. Oh, now that's just where he wants it. Keep the pressure on right there, and you got to win. St. John has to hold on to the leg, but he can't score that way. It's going to end right here. There's the takedown. Nine to six. A tough win for Lincoln McElravey. Actually, his first varsity win. Maybe that'll get him over the hump. Oh, that's a big, big win for Lincoln McElravey. And so it's 12 to 5 now, Iowa over Arizona State after four weights. Well, you wonder why it's a big win? Coach thinks it's a big win. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a big load off Gable's mind right there to have McElravey come out and perform like that in front of the home crowd. It gets a very tough, very game Steve St. John. Now there's Terry Steiner, and this is Jeff Thyler against him. An Iowa high school wrestler against a South North Dakota wrestler. The Iowa wrestler is wrestling for Arizona State. Jeff Thyler of Dowling, who went out to the Southwest and is in the lineup at 150 pounds. Several of the Sun Devil wrestlers have moved up to fill a vacancy above them as everybody goes up to as far as Pat Lynch at 177, who has a hand injury and couldn't come on this uh, Eastern trip. There's Steiner in on the high crotch. Still neutral, still neutral, still neutral. And he does not have a takedown yet because but I don't think that uh, Tyler can keep it very long. He could. Two nothing. Terry Steiner, undefeated in 22 matches. There he is, high in on that leg again. Boy, he'll turk you to death up there. The leg in, he's a driver on top. Well, this is a match that Jeff Tyler would like to do good in. It's his first appearance back in Iowa in a college uniform since he was a three-time state champion at West Des Moines at Dowling. There's the bent leg turk. He's gonna try to bring Tyler over to his back with it. See him reach back for the ankle. Had to give it up, though. Well, this is strength against strength because we know how good Terry Steiner is on top, but Jeff Thyler is a good mat wrestler, and he'll be hard to turn. Well, I'll tell you, there's a double double bar arm from behind by Steiner. He's, you don't call this riding, do you? This no. Is, this is breakdown This is breakdown and turn. And turn. <laughs> he goes out front to take Tyler to his back. Is he on his back yet? Yes, there are. Two. Two points for a near fall. Two. Now he has him again. Well, I'll tell you. You know, I know that Coach Gable, the one thing he'd like Terry Steiner to get is that killer instinct. I see it tonight. Three point near fall that time. You get three if you hold a man in a near fall position for five seconds. Well, this is the way that uh, Terry Steiner has to wrestle against everyone if he's going to win a national title. He's got to take it after him because he has it. He has the skill. He has the move. You can't sit back if you want to win a title. You've got to have that killer instinct, and this is the type of uh, wrestling that Coach Gable's hoping that Terry Steiner can carry through the NCAAs. Well, he's, at a, he's been at another level this year. 
He has not yet won a national title. Last year, he was fifth. The year before, third. And it's his last crack in 93. Well, he's a little bigger than he has been in the past. He's grown into that 150-pound spot, uh, Terry Steiner has. Got a little tougher, got a little meaner. And uh, he's not giving up as many uh, easy points as he used to. Um, and he's just a better wrestler than he's ever been. Boy, the idea to break him down. He can break people down with those legs so well. Now he gets them down. And even if there is, if you remember Jeff Thyler in high school meets in Iowa, you know he's a strong, good wrestler. But Steiner gets him flat like this. When you're broken down, you're a lot easier to turn. And you can see what Steiner is doing. Take the legs out from under you, put you on your chest. Goes right out front for this bar. Period ends. Seven zip and a, how much riding time? Two and a quarter, 225. There's Lil Steiner beside uh, uh, Mrs. Gable, Kathy Gable, and Lil Steiner, Troy and Terry's mother on the right. Kathy Gable on the left. Seven zip. Now, Thyler starts on top. Steiner had his choice. He's going to have to come out the back door. You see Thyler put the leg in, too, the way Steiner does, but not so successfully because it looks like Steiner's going to come right out the back. He did. Nine nothing on the reversal. Again, Turks him flat and then goes to work on the arms up high. That's a, that's a, he doesn't compromise. <laughs> and he, he's the kind of guy who doesn't, you, you can't just stall down there either because <laughs> there's nowhere to go. He, t he takes those legs on you and then he turns you right. over. Right, and, and that's a good point, Doug. Jeff Thyler is not stalling down there. He's being overpowered. There's a difference between stalling and being overpowered. We're seeing what overpowering means right now. We're also seeing a good lesson for high school wrestlers. Break down your man first and then go after the turn. You can't be trying to turn and uh, without breaking the man down. Sometimes it happens in high school because you're such an overpowering wrestler. So that's when you get to Division dangerous. One, you got to be like Terry Steiner. Break down and turn. Here's a reversal, and a lot of the time when you use the legs, you can get too high and get in trouble. That's what happened to Jeff Thyler, and uh, Steiner was able to shake him off. The difference between Steiner on top is he just, first of all, breaks a man down. Look at he crushes the hips. Hey, Thyler's not going anywhere right now, so he can't shake Terry, Terry Steiner down. So our floor director, Roger Crimmins, uh, just showed me a note. Steiner doesn't ride, he punishes. <laughs> yeah. Usually when Crimmins gives me a note, I don't give him credit. And I just say, uh, I, I act like it's my hands. So I <laughs> keep those notes coming. We're going to have a little break here at 150 pounds after 150. There is a, there's the Steiner father. That's Tim Steiner. And he's watching the second of his offspring to wrestle here Bottom today. Set, Earlier at 134 pounds, where he's dropped, Troy Steiner beat All-American Marco Sanchez 6-3. to three. Iowa leads 12-5. to five. Sorry if we don't give you the score often enough. Occasionally I forget to do that. 12-5 to five, Iowa over Arizona State. And here at 150, Steiner leads over Thyler 9-zip, and he has a world of riding time. Here's a reminder that at the intermission, We'll be previewing those uh, big weekend matches next Friday and Saturday between Iowa and Ohio State on Friday night and Iowa and Iowa State on Saturday night. Nine o'clock starts, and we'll look at what happened in the first half with number of takedowns and near falls and the sort of thing. Here's Tyler in on the leg. Nice shot, but he wasn't able to follow through on it. He was in, he was tight, but the hips of Terry Steiner was able to ward off Jeff Tyler. Tyler had a shot, might be the only one he gets the whole match. Right on the edge, they're both out of bounds until Chad Crow, the official, will bring him back to the center again, set up. Nine, nothing. Steiner leads. In the black, Terry Steiner, undefeated this year, ranked first. That's Leroy Smith. Leroy Smith's gonna have an interesting 
uh, weekend with Iowa and Iowa State. He's competed against uh, Dan Gable, Bobby Douglas. He's competed for him as a wrestler, and he's coached with him at the national level. So this is an exciting challenge for Leroy to be a collegiate coach against these uh, fine top-notch coaches like Gable and well, Steiner got in on a single leg, and this is where it ends with the takedown. He has control. He leads 11 to nothing now over Jeff Tyler, who was a three-time state champion at the Dowling in West Des Moines and a one-time third-place winner as a freshman. Out front, Steiner is confident enough to go out there against Tyler and try to turn him with a bar arm. Uncompromising fellow. He's a powerful man from the top position. Chad Crow is concerned about the angle of the of the shoulder there, the arm at the shoulder. Well, Jeff Thaler doing all he can to not try to go down, go to his uh, belly, go to his back. He's trying hard. I'll tell you what, he's up against the best right now. The best has proven his worth. 35 seconds to go. Again, here you see Steiner in on the leg with his legs. Terry Steiner is a man on a mission right now. Like you said, he has not won a national title like his brother. He doesn't want to go out without doing it. He's a man on a mission. Boom, he has Tyler flat again. And from there, when he has, when Tyler has no position underneath, he wants to flatten him. And Tyler is called. Well, like I said, I don't, I don't know what else he could do right now. It's uh... And it ends there, it's a shutout. Riding time. Riding time makes it 12 nothing. A major decision for Terry Steiner. And so that will be four points for the Iowa team. They go into the intermission here, leading 16 to five over the Sun Devils from Arizona State. And it's the end of the 150-pound match. Tim and I will be back in just a moment. We'll have more college wrestling coverage on your statewide home for sports, Iowa Public Television, a resource for Iowa's future. You found a resource for Iowa's future here on Iowa Public Television. Welcome back to Carver Hawkeye Arena, where it's Arizona State against Iowa, the fourth ranked team coming in to the third team's lair here, and where Iowa is so tough to beat. 16 to five after the first five weights, 150 pounds. Well, before we go to the last five here, at Arizona State and Iowa, let's talk about next week, because we have two special, special presentations for you, nighttime, same night coverage, here on Iowa Public Television on Friday and Saturday. Friday night, Russ Hellickson's uh, Ohio State Buckeyes come in. When we talked about Ohio State, they have a, some tremendous individuals on that team. Well, I think depending on how it all matches up, I think you're talking about the one team that could defeat Iowa here at Carver Hawkeye. They've got some tremendous individuals. Depends on how they come together as a team, how it all gels. But they could have a, they could have a shot at that and the Big Ten title. That's right, and we're not just, we're not just pumping to make you watch uh, because that, you know how that goes, but this, this they really have some tremendous teams. Uh, some wrestlers, we Kevin, Kevin Randleman, for instance, 177. They have a, a, a young fellow at 134 who is uh, really flashy in the national duels. And then Saturday, well, what do we have to say about Iowa and Iowa State, except that it's the names this year. Iowa against Iowa State, the uh, Cyclones are ranked number five, and they have at least two, two three, it's number seven, I should say, but number two, Oh, only two or three people have a chance to win the national title. Well, we've got Olympic coach against Olympic coach also. Bobby Douglas at Iowa State. First time he's met Dan Gable, who a lot of people think that's the reason Bobby Douglas made the move to the heartland, to go up against Dan Gable. It should be great. We showed you at the beginning tonight uh, a graphic that gave you an idea maybe why Penn State is ranked first. While lots of people have ranked wrestlers, top-ranked people, you see over there on the right-hand side, Penn State has nine wrestlers ranked in the top 12, and some of the rest have not so many. But look over on the left. How many can actually win it? Well, that's a good question. And Iowa, of course, has five in the top three. And that's great, but what Dan Gable says is, I want to make sure, and that's what he's trying to do. He tries to raise that number from six to nine or so that could actually place in the top eight. So we'll see uh, quite a bit about the relative strengths of some of these teams and where uh, Iowa State has come 
uh, next Saturday night, but Ohio State against Iowa here in Carver Hawkeye Arena. We'll carry it at 9 o'clock, same night coverage next Friday, and Iowa State at home against Iowa next Saturday here on Iowa Public Television. Well, there's Dan Gable. And here looking at the back of his 158-pounder, a freshman from Don Bosco, one of the great small school wrestling programs in the state of Iowa, Don Bosco of Gilbertville. That's Daryl Weber. Daryl Weber. He's been sharing time with Cataldo at 158. The opponent here is a 150-pounder, actually, from Arizona State named Miguel Spencer, the first of the men to move up a weight for Arizona State because of the missing 177-pounder, Pat Lynch. Now, this is a true freshman from another great wrestling town, Dell City, Oklahoma. Great because of the Smith family, because that's where John Smith, Leroy Smith, Pat Smith, and yes, there's another one coming. Mark Smith, he's already won two uh, state titles, all wrestled for Dell City High School. Spencer in on the legs. And he gets the takedown over Darrell Weber. So Oklahoma High School wins the uh, first takedown over the Iowa High School. Of course, Don Bosco, one of the longtime powers in the small uh, class, one of my favorite coaches, Don Mashick, has done a great job there. And Darrell Weber coming out and doing a nice job of making this lineup by beating out Rich Catalano uh, for the team this week. And Really, that weight is up in the air. It depends on how Daryl Weber looks uh, here in this match, possibly next week. There might be another wrestle-off. You never know. Catalano and uh, Weber, it's uh, all up in the air. It's two to one here. We just used about half of the first period, three minutes long. 16 to five, Iowa over Arizona State. The only win for the Sun Devils so far was a technical fall at 126 pounds by number one ranked defending national champion Sean Charles. That throw by Spencer happened out of bounds, so it didn't count, and it's two to one Spencer over Weber as they come back to the center. Referee Chad Crow of St. Paul. Well, you can see Sets Miguel Spencer is explosive. He can go upper body and he can shoot on the Our ankles too. And so it's it's a, it could be a wild match right here because we've seen now how slick Miguel Spencer is. Now, theoretically, if Spencer's coming up from 150, there's a warning against Weber. Apparently, you'd think they expect Weber to be bigger, but Spencer looks pretty good sized here. Well, Spencer was a three-time undefeated state champion. Had, didn't get beat from his freshman year, where he placed in, in the high school tournament his freshman year, but didn't get beat after that. He had a streak of 96 in a row, and he won 89 falls in that time. But here's Weber in a high crotch move. Switches off to the double and scores the first takedown for the Iowa wrestler. That was really well done. He hit a high crotch there, and then he was able to neutralize Miguel Spencer on his hips and come across with a double leg to finish the move. One red, neutral. Neutral. The escape goes to Spencer. This is going to be a good match because these are well-balanced, well-matched. Wrestlers who have never faced each other, I think. Right here, strong front headlock, but he slipped it. Two, two, if he can four, clear out that knee, five. he can clear out that knee, he'll have a real good opportunity to pin Miguel Spencer. He did. Look at this pressure. He actually uses the knee to press the uh, to press right in against uh, Spencer. Well, uh, Spencer, we didn't see it earlier, but Spencer had a front headlight, slipped it off, slipped off it, and suddenly found himself on his back. And Weber, countering brilliantly, put him away. 22 to five in favor of the Hawkeyes. 167 pounds for Arizona State. 22 to 5. And a first period fall. He had nine seconds to go. Now let's go to 167. Keith Trammell here, senior from City High School in Iowa City for Iowa. And his opponent is Marcus Malika, another of these 
flashy recruits who came. This one from, from uh, Akron, Ohio, Walsh Jesuit High School. And as a freshman, he's ranked fifth in the country at 158 pounds, but he's up a weight. So the question here is, can a ranked wrestler at 158 come up and do well against a solid wrestler, but unranked at a bigger weight? Trammell is a good story also, coming out of City High here in Iowa City. He walked onto this Iowa program. Now he's a solid starter, looking to be an All-American. First period. Marcus Malika. 19 and three in his freshman year. Well, he's, he shows a lot of maturity as a freshman. He, he, you can tell that he understands position already where he keeps his hips down right there and he makes it hard. He's got good composure for a freshman and when you're 19 and three against the competition at Arizona State wrestles, you're darn good. He didn't lose a match in his last two years. Hey, gentlemen, follow through. As we Finish said in attack. high school and in Ohio. Oh, yeah. Very strong. Here comes Trammell. He's in behind. He doesn't have a takedown yet. Now he has it. Big takedown for Trammell. What Trammell did do well is took the hips away, and he continues to control the hips right there. Trammell is seasoned. Even though this is his first time in as the all-time starter, he has started before. Look at this. He's in tight now. He pulls in the hips around there and slips around for two points. Tell you, TJ, this is a must-win for Arizona State. This is this match they have to win to really even stay close to Iowa because Ray Miller is coming up next. They figured to do well with him. Well, I think this is a real big match for Keith Trammell also yes. because uh, he wants to establish himself seeding wise in the NCAA. He wants to get that confidence up. I think this is a big match for Keith Trammell. Nice place to have it in front of uh, the home fans. Uh, this could uh, move him up and become a ranked wrestler. Two to one, we're at Carver Hawkeye Arena on Iowa Public Television. Arizona State at Iowa, high crotch. Not a too far out. Looks like Malika couldn't bring it in. Good hip control by Trammell. We have about 56 seconds left to go. Guys, let's go, offense. Trammell trying to keep changing the motion right there, keep the pressure on, and not allowing Malika in. Now that, that, that happens. That warning happens because because Malika had his back to the edge of the mat. He he kept circling back, and he's got to stay in the middle. So Trammell. Keeps moving at him. He leads two to one. He got the first takedown. The only takedown. We have 25 seconds to go in the first period. See, it's not like that's something new. Chad Crow's been consistent with that call. You know, it'd be one thing if uh, that's the first time that he called it, but it's another thing when you know, especially on this black and gold mat, if you turn your back and go out, off to the edge, you're going to get called for stalling. So you just don't do it. End of the first period coming up. Trammell had a good period. He went two to one. Now let's show you what happened here. Up through 158 pounds for each team. You see the team score at the top. Total points scored. It was a little bit closer. Uh, but there were some falls in there. A couple of them. Takedowns. But, well, it says 13 to 7. And that was mainly because of Sean Charles. Arizona State had twice as many takedowns and they're behind 22 to 5. Malika lets Malika was on top and he let Trammell out to try to take him down. It's three to one in favor of the Hawkeye here. Keith Trammell. Best he ever did in high school was the third place one time. And he walked onto the Iowa program and has made his way. Well, he just need, he, like I said, he needs a win right here against someone like Malika. He needs to break through and, and beat those um, higher ranked wrestlers. He's got good position. He keeps after him. This is a great place for him to come through with a big match. Let's go, guys. Come on. Malika trailing three to one still uh, is not. Well, obviously, Keith Pamela's keeping good position because Malika has not ventured a major takedown shot here. And 
given the position on the edge there like that, he is in danger of uh, uh, next time being called and being penalized a point. Three to one. 45 seconds to go, second period. That's Trammell of Iowa with the... Here comes Malika around behind on a single leg, but it's on the edge of the mat. Out of bounds. Three to one. Again, Trammell locks up with Malika in the center at a three to one lead for Trammell. Now this time Trammell is worn, so they're even. Chad Crow is looking for a little more activity. And the second period's almost over. Three to one. It was two to one at the end of the first period. That's Jeff McGinnis there, one of the most accomplished high school wrestlers in the country who has signed already to wrestle in his hometown for the University of Iowa. Also from City High, just like Keith Trammell. Now this is one young man who's never had third place. He's never even th seen third place because he's never been beaten. He's three-time state champion and going for his fourth. Right. In two weeks, you can see him go for his fourth championship on our coverage of the state high school meet. Saturday night, the 20th, is that the 27th? 6.30 that night, we start with the Grand March and go all the way through with that three-ring circus. We have two minutes to go of wrestling here with Malika on the bottom, trailing 3-1. He had liked to get out and then go to work on the feet, but Trammell's done a good job. Kept hand control, now brings Malika back to the mat again. And Malika now is out. You can see where Malik, uh, he got hand control, he came up, tried to stand up, he got down, got hand control again, but then he changed to a low-level switch, came out for the uh, almost a reversal, but came out for one point. So he's able to come up, stand up, come down, low-level, come out for one. And that's, the, uh, that's when you're most successful, is when you can both stand up and do low-level uh, reversals and escape. Their styles are pretty much Lockhorn styles. You know, they, uh, here comes Trammell, the a shot. He has the only takedown and he got it early in the first period and they, with a 3-2 to two match and each man having been warned you'd hate to have it come down to a penalty point, but it could. Malika still unable to reach Trammell from the outside. Warning, one right there, let's go. Okay, you know, it's one of those where you're going to have to score to win anyway. You can't hang around for a minute with a one-point win, or a one-point lead. And so now it's tied up. There's no riding time that, advantage right here. And so it's that, takedown wins one way or another, right? That's right. That point win to went to Malika because Trammell was called. Offense, gentlemen, let's so go. we have 40 seconds to go. Somebody can take this match home. 3-3, 167 pounds, Arizona State against Iowa. Freshman Marcus Malika against senior Keith Trammell of the Hawks. If one of the other wrestlers could put pressure on the other one, there's possibility of a penalty right here, and that could stop the match. Yes, now Malika, you know, she was more aggressive. Uh, suddenly, the Trammell had his back to the mat. Big takedown for Malika yeah, right there. That was a big one. It was a... Uh, it was almost like a switch in, in mental attitude there at the end because Malika suddenly was the one on pushing his opponent to the edge and he got the takedown at the end to win five to three. I'd say composure, maturity, you know, all those words for a freshman like Malika have to be expressed. Nice job by Malika to stay, you know, even though it took him till the end, he got a great big takedown for Arizona State. So there's the score now after seven matches, 22 to eight. There's the final takedown. In on that single leg, pressured with his shoulder and his uh, head to the inside, just pressured the hips, took him down. Go, there's Leroy 20. Smith's reaction. It's not elation, it's just, all oh, right, it's about time. Something went our way. 22-8. <laughs> Malika, so he's 20 and three this year. You're gonna see a lot of him, I'll tell you. There's some awfully good freshmen on this team. Here comes the number one ranked man at 167. 
Ray Miller. He's at 77 because Pat Lynch, the regular man at that weight, is unable to make the trip into Iowa against the Hawks and the Cyclones because of a hand injury. Ray Miller, all he's done this year is win 16 matches without a loss. All he's done in his career in three years is win, is be an All-American three times. He hasn't won a title yet, but he's ranked number one this year. And he's and ranked number one at a weight lower than what he's at right now. So again, it's a question of can a good man at a higher weight beat an outstanding proven veteran at a lower weight? And actually, Ray Miller's up two weights from where he was last year. I mean, he was at a 158, and now he's up to 167 normally, and now he's one more up. So we'll see. But, you know, I don't think, like you said, I don't think he looks like he's giving away any weight. Looks big. Matt Naram is uh, from North Fayette High School. West Union, Iowa is his home. All right, guys, on the cement one. Let's get it. Heavy hands. He's been sharing time at 177 pounds. I don't think this one is set either for Dan Gable. We have Greg Stiltner out of Virginia, and, and um, of course, near him out of Iowa here going at it, and probably wrestle-offs here and there, and who looks good in the matches. But it'll be decided in a couple of weeks. Single leg by Miller. Can he finish it? Can he finish it? Okay, okay. Oh, he, he can. He, he got the ankle. Well, he had it. Yeah, nice job by near him right there. Maybe he can get a stalemate call. Looks like he can. No score. Hey, you know how good this Ray Miller is? I mean, how many wrestlers do you know that have a day named after them? He goes back each year to his town in Marlow, Oklahoma, and they have Ray Miller Day. And so... You're kidding. I, no, no. They, each year they celebrate it. And so he was uh, quite a wrestler. He in won a small town in Oklahoma. He won three state championships. I know his, his last two years, he was the outstanding wrestler in the tournament both years in Oklahoma. Well, he's an outstanding man in the eyes of his uh, town in Marlowe. They appreciate him, and they give him Ray Miller Day. Here he comes again, that single leg. But Naram keeps the other foot away. <laughs> and so Miller hasn't been able to finish it. No score. Well, he's keeping the pressure on the head, see? There's a warning against Naram. Miller has moved up. He was fifth as a freshman, fourth as a junior, second last year. And, you know, last year he finished second, and he wrestled the entire NCAA tournament with torn knee ligaments. And they've since been repaired, but, you know, you got to have a lot of desire to, to wrestle on torn uh, ligaments against that kind of competition. Coach Smith been working with him to open up a little more this year. Again, we get in that single leg position right on the edge. And again, nothing comes of it. So far, uh, Miller's been the one that's been able to get the low level attack in. Neerum's been able to counter. You know, Miller, he can go upper body too. One thing about Ray Miller is he can move up and down the body, and that's the mark of a good wrestler when you don't just aren't uh, uh, stuck with one type of move, low level or high level, and then you're able to be predicted against. Offense, guys, come on. He can move up and down that body. Get to work. And he's going to say, besides his wrestling, uh, he's an engineering student. Yeah, he's a very tactical young man. He's a student of wrestling. What Coach Smith said is sometimes he's too tactical. They like, he likes to, he'd like him to try to break his opponents more instead of being so tactical. Ray Miller. There's the end of the first period and nobody scored. Now these are the national champions for Arizona State. A couple of them there for Dan St. John. Curly Culp, Eddie Urbano. Red takes down Green's choice. Done a lot of international. Actually, Dan St. John is, is one of the cover pictures of the amateur wrestling news this last time out in a match, so he's still working. Curly Culp was a football player and wrestler. Just recently deceased. So this time, Miller starts underneath, tries to switch, and he's out. Red escape, we're neutral. one nothing in favor of the Sun Devil. No score when they were on their uh, feet in the first period, though. Ray Miller up a weight, undefeated this year, but up a weight against Matt Naram, who is a tough, tough sophomore from West Virginia. Another one of these people with heart who had a 
didn't win a championship in high school. In fact, he was third three years in a row. Really frustrating, I'm sure. Came to Iowa, and Dan Gable has worked hard with him, and he's worked hard himself. And he's offense, offense. In the Hawkeye lineup. One nothing Miller. At 177 in Carver Hawkeye Arena, it's Arizona State against Iowa. Nice high crotch move, but he doesn't have the arm through, and that, that was a good nice hit. There's what you talk about hips now, can near him turn it into a score. Keep Wasn't able let's to. Go. Keep that off Let's go. Good counter by Naram that time. Back Miller's been there. Okay. There he's on a low level attack. He's in, but near him with his length and his leverage. Can he hang on to that ankle and get the stalemate call? Now, see, Naram has made up his mind. He's going to stay with one, one leg here rather than two. Whoa! Oh, this is going to be close. If he can hook in the leg and keep his hips tight, nope. Miller's going to turn it into two. And that was close. That's the first takedown of this match. That was a scramble after a single leg shot by Ray Miller. He leads 3-0 over Naram, but Naram has done himself proud here, and he may be able to still have a period to go. No change, still down. One second to go in the second period. See Leroy Smith. Dan Gable. Jim Zaleski on the right. Royce Alger sitting next to Gable. Choice. Now, Naram has his choice in the third period. Let's see that reversal. Or that takedown. Takedown right here. If Naram could have stayed a little tighter and maybe he got his leg hooked across the opposite uh, leg for Miller, he would have had the two, but Miller was able to scoot around, scoot his hips out, come out for the two-point takedown. Uh, we have a timeout here taken by an injury timeout for Miller. He's... Uh, complaining about some problem with his knee, and it's not the knee that was injured last year, I believe. Not too big of an area. See Chad Crow looking over the situation as the trainer comes out and works with, with Ray Miller. So I said, he's, he's an engineering student, too, and that, as anybody who's been around engineering programs knows, that's a tough... It's a tough road to hoe. So it's not all wrestling with him. We hope you're enjoying Iowa Public Television's coverage of college wrestling. And we're going to have these two big meets next weekend. Prime time special editions. Friday night, Ohio State against Iowa here at Carver Hawkeye. Saturday night, Iowa at Iowa State in the big one between the two state powers. Miller. Starts in the top position in the third period, leading 3 nothing. He's a cruncher on top. He has the best pin record, certainly, of any of the Arizona State wrestlers. Seven, win, seven falls in 16 wins. And yeah, he's getting better at turning all the time, too. So Naram gets to his feet. Naram needs to get out fast. Hustle in, One thing about Ray Miller, you don't see, you see him wrestle a lot of people close. In fact, Coach Smith says he can wrestle anybody close. <laughs> One of those scary people. Yeah. You, you know, he's, he never puts it away. <laughs> Naram gets to his feet, but I think uh, Miller is being called for not returning him to the mat. That's a warning against Miller, so that each man has been warned. Next time a stall is called, it's a point for somebody. Well, Neerum has to come up now. He's got to come up, clear the hands, get his hips underneath him, and move. He's got to come up and make, got to make these points in the next couple of uh, seconds here for him to be in this match. Miller just crossed the one-minute mark in riding time, so that's a potential point. A warning. Inspiring. Now this has made this call against Miller, and it's a point for uh, Naram is going to make has made Leroy Smith very mad. Let's listen. Yep. 
Break the guy flat. He's, He's not breaking go though. In a circle. He's circling. Him. Break He's the circle. guy. That's the only way you get the hip flat. It's a warning over here. Warning this side. Here we go. Now that's a warning against okay. Leroy yeah. Smith. The reason being, yeah. you're questioning judgment. It's not a matter of the rule book. The and so he's got a warning spiral, right now. Go Sometimes, as a coach, you just got to do that, you know? You can't let the referee get away with what you don't think is a, a, a good call. You just got to go up, take the warning, and put it the bug in the referee's ears. You may get it back a little later. So now it's 3-1 to one with a minute, less than a minute to go. And Ray Miller undefeated at 167 this year, ranked number one there. Now it's out, three to two. And a takedown by either man will win this match. Well, actually, it's uh, four points. Yeah, right in time for Miller. That's right, Naram has to take him down to get a tie and send it into overtime because we don't have draws anymore. Well, if he pushes and Ray Miller stays on the outside, he's gonna get called for stalling again right here. But naram has gotta create it and gotta make it go. Naram pushing him hard. Miller got the double underhook and just hung on there with 20 seconds to go. Then Gable. Low single by Naram. The official has called a point already against Miller. Here comes Naram. Points as it ends. With riding time, the riding time saves Ray Miller. A penalty point made it 3-3 on the clock, but Ray Miller had a minute and just over a minute of riding time and stays undefeated. He beat Matt Naram at 177, 4-3, and that's the third win for the Arizona Sun Devils. It's now 22 to 11. We go to 190. I think Ray Miller will be happy to have Pat Lynch back because we can go back down to yeah. 167. <laughs> you come in here, you go out with a win against a tough man like Matt Naram. You know, a win's a win when you're away from home and you're in a hostile environment. But take nothing away, Matt Naram made it close. He, he, he stuck in there and he gave it all he had. He's gonna be, he's gonna give a tough tussle there. It's gonna be hard for Greg Stiltner. It's gonna be a hard choice between Stiltner and Naram at 177, in fact. They're both Joel Sherritt, Joel Sherritt, let's set up the 90 pounders here. Joel Sherritt, ranked third in the country, is in there for the Hawkeyes. Dan Henderson, who is an uh, interesting wrestling situation senior in uh, after having begun his college wrestling career quite a while ago well actually he's only had one year of college wrestling hey guys, that was at up. the Let's University go. of California Fullerton uh, Cal State Fullerton in 1990 and then he trained for the Olympics and guess what made the Olympic team he's an Olympian he finished 10th on the Greco-Roman team and he came up to Leroy uh, Smith and said I think I have a year eligibility left and uh, they talked about it. They talked. He, Leroy knew that 177 was going to be filled with Pat Lynch, but he said, "I think we can work it out. I know I have a hole at 190." So they work it out. They did. Yeah. Anderson has the single leg. So he's a light 190 pounder. He's really a 77 pounder, but he's happy to be wrestling. Yes, he was. He was the Olympic Greco-Roman 180.5 wrestler, and that's. Uh, no legs, you don't use the legs, you don't attack the legs, you don't use the legs, except to stand on. <laughs> Attached to your hips. And obviously he likes to control the upper body ties, and, but he can also attack the ankles, Coach Smith said. Likes those hip throws, two on one, likes to drag it. Well, right there, he likes to do what uh, Joel Sherritt's doing. Joel Sherritt, he is really coming on right now. He avenged one of his three losses to a uh, very fine wrestler from Wisconsin, uh, Davison, the right. other night. And uh, he's coming on, he's ranked high. Ranked third, 21 and three. From Kennedy High School in Bloomington, Minnesota, sophomore. Coaches expect a lot out of him. Probably no more than he expects from himself. Joel Sheriff against Dan Henderson. 
That was that was kind of thrilling, but it happened on the outside of the wrestling area, and it didn't count. So here we come to the middle again. Henderson ties up on the two-on-one right away. Now, uh, Chad Crow, I believe, is going to warn Henderson for wrestling on the edge of the mat. 40 seconds to go in the first period. The first time they met, it was a close match. It was seven to five at the national duels between Sherritt and, and uh, Dan Henderson. Sherritt winning seven to five. Sherritt's very aggressive. He just comes straight at. Henderson has been warned once. Chad Crow came over and told the Arizona State coaches, don't coach me, coach your kids, but don't coach me. Offense, guys, come That's on, the time remaining in the first period. No score. That happened out of bounds, too. first period will end here with this score it does I think it's Sherrod's choice no it's Naram Henderson's choice he, he defers and he lets Sherrod choose what he wants and Sherrod goes on the bottom Dan Henderson in the top position Sherrod comes right to his feet Sherritt's able to keep his hips up, tripod right there, controls the hands, controls the head, comes out for one. And he's out. It's one nothing. Sherritt. One to nothing. That's Dan Henderson from Apple Valley, California. Wrestled for Victor Valley High School in Victorville, California, and was a two-time national junior champion. A double national junior champion. What I mean is he won the juniors in both Greco-Roman and freestyle. So he's accomplished. Sherrod had the head with that single leg for a while. Now he's now going to try to double. Yep. He scored the first takedown. As I've said throughout, you either use the hips or you lose the hips. And right there, Sherrod was able to use his power to drive through Henderson's hips. Get the two-point takedown. About a minute to go in the second period now with Sherritt leading 3 0. It's Iowa 22, Arizona State 11. Watch your angles. John Ostendorf will wrestle heavyweight against Corey Farkas of Arizona State. He'll be heavily favored. Iowa has the third ranked wrestler in each of these two upper weights. Sherritt at 90 and Ostendorf at heavy. Stalemate. 30 seconds to go. Here's, Here's that takedown finish. See, he uses, he takes away the hip, he drives with his shoulder, head to the outside. There was no way Henderson could stop that. Two point takedown for Sherrod. Sherrod has uh, scored all his points, his three points in the second period. He escaped, and he got that takedown you just saw. He's in on the leg, but you see, he's not able to break Henderson flat. He has not been able to break him down. To, now he did, as soon as I said that. <laughs> and this is, a, this is what you got to do. On, now, uh, and this is what Henderson has to do. If he can get back up and get the hips back on, underneath him, he doesn't get in trouble. 22 to 11, we have seven seconds to go in the second period at 190. That's the, that's the team score, 22 to 11, Iowa over Arizona State after eight matches. Henderson will not get out in this period. There it is. Sherrod leads three to nothing. Here's what's happened so far. Zappital got Iowa started with a fall. And then Charles brought it almost all the way back. He's number one ranked. Troy Steiner a tough one over Sanchez. McElravey won a tough one over St. John. Those matches were tough and Iowa went up 
big, then Terry Steiner won big. Weber had a, a fall, that was a real barn burner, and Weber made a big difference in this meet. Malika and Miller, however, have won the last two matches in close ones for Arizona State, and it's now 22 to 11. And we go back to the third period at 190 with Sherritt on top against Henderson, who was not able to get away from uh, Sherritt earlier. Now he did. 3-1, that's the first score. 3-1. to one. Here comes Sherrod. He doesn't like to take any backward steps. One thing that's uh, hurt Henderson over the years are nagging injuries, and, and um, that's why it's probably kind of good that he had to stay up at 190 and didn't have to concentrate on losing weight because what Coach Smith needs is for him to have a healthy Henderson going into the Pac 10s and the NCAAs because we're definitely looking at two. Now, what difference, Very much would, potential all now what difference would staying up at 190 make? Because you can, you can concentrate on your conditioning instead of just cutting weight. Sometimes when you're just cutting weight, those nagging injuries hurt just a little bit more. Three to one in favor of Sherritt, the man in black. The Iowa Hawkeye. His team leads 22 to 11. He leads three to one with a less than a minute now to go against Dan Henderson, Henderson of the Sun Devils. Henderson has not been able to uh, get any offense going at all against Sherrod. Sherrod has come forward, driven him back, driven him back. So even if Sherrod, now there's a, that's what happens when, when you get your back to the mat again, the edge of the mat. He got called for stalling again, and he's now down four to one. And Sherrod's the kind of wrestler that's gonna keep coming at you. Kind of a bulldog tenacity right there. Just keeps coming straight forward. Has some good moves, but I think one of his best moves is straightforward type wrestling. Now Henderson is uh, is asking for injury timeout here. Not quite sure what the uh, situation is here. He comes back to the center again against Joel Sherrod. 30 seconds to go. It's 4-1. See, Sherrod just manhandling him with the size and power. He, he will not let him turn out, turn away. Keeps pummeling inside. Look at that. In on that double. If he can stay in bounds right here, he doesn't. But that's what happens when you can pummel for inside position, then lower your level and put the pressure on your opponent. You got a takedown usually if you're in the middle of the mat. See, he's pummeling, he's gonna stay inside, inside. Now he's got the front headlock, he might come around. But he's controlling this match, Joel Sherrod. Except, oh, except right there, he slipped off. Slipped off that front headlock. Yeah. And so it's 4-3 now, Henderson scores for the first time. And that was a Dan Henderson move too, that just wasn't a slip, that it was Henderson slipping off, nice move. Made a liar out of me. 4-3 though, with riding time, it's 5-3. And so it's Joel Sherrod winning another one for the Hawkeyes. It's 25 to 11 now. Hello, 25 to 11. There's John Ostendorf. Last time he wrestled. Rank third. This guy, that's all one of the nicest back arches. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. We may get a chance to show you that. Uh, I know somewhere along the line. I'm not sure if we have it, but with the national duels, Ostendorf pinned Farkas here. Corey Farkas of Arizona State with a throw. And Ostendorf here starts out with a, a quick takedown. Well, it'd be a victory for Farkas if he just kept from getting pinned. This young man here, John Ostendorf, needs to come through for the Hawkeyes this year, obviously. Ranked third. Yes, he is. He's ranked third with a nine and one record. And he could get the condition. If he could get good, the conditioning, I'm sure Gable in the back of his mind, and hopefully John O in the back of his mind, 
they haven't ruled out the fact that John would like to stand on top of that gold medal this year. But there's some good heavyweights, of course, the defending national uh, champion, and of course, Ruland Gardner, who beat John Osenor from Nebraska and ranked ahead of him. Two to one. Corey Farkas came from Edinburgh, where he started his career, and then uh, didn't wrestle there, actually. He transferred back to the West. He's, a, he's actually a native of, or he's a, at least he lived and went to high school in the suburb of Los Angeles. And he's joined the Arizona State program. He just got taken down for the second time. It's four to one. Here comes a nice oh, tilt. How many heavyweights do you see? Use a tilt. That yeah. roll through, use a tilt, and score. Three point air fall. The answer, not many. Here's what happened in the national group. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. He won't even bounce when he hits the mat. Look oh, at this. Look He'll at stick him right away. Watch his hips Boom. come around. Boom. That's it. <laughs> now he's able to get in, lower the level. Nice attack, get his hips underneath him, and the back arch just like that, only last time went right to his back. Here's the tilt again, scoring. Two, three, four, go. He got two point near pole that time. Now it's nine to one. Want to escape, man? We're neutral. And it's nine to two after the escape. Ostendorf dominating Farkas. His team has clinched the meet. 25 to 11. That's a low level attack by Farkas and <laughs> it didn't work out very well. Now the big O, he's, uh, he's come a long ways and like, well, we talk about next week's match with Ohio State. It could come down. You never know. It could come down to the match with Mendoza from Ohio yeah, right. State. That'd be a great one. You don't want to lose your leave your seats either at the arena or in front of the TV next week before the heavyweight match. So that'll be Friday night, Ohio State and... And then and the Iowa Iowa. State with Jeff... Uh, with uh, Todd Kinney. Todd Kinney. Oh, Two great heavyweight matches coming your way next week. Eleven to two with ten seconds to go in the first period. John Ostendorf leads his Sun Devil opponent Handley has three takedowns and two near falls. Ron and Ellen Ostendorf. They don't have to travel too far, just rep their old nickels. And of course, Ostendorf, John wrestled for West Liberty and was a state champion. Played a little football this year, too. Nose for guard for Hayden, for Hayden Fry. And Played a little football. If, he would, if they would have played him a little bit more, they may have had more success. <laughs> Played too little. I just worried about his foot. Now, it was 13 to 2. I think uh, the uh, reversal was given to Ostendorp. Ostendorp started on the bottom. And then the potentially dangerous situation stopped action. Ostendorp used the international start to let Farkas go and work from the feet. Let's go. Get to work now. He'd like to throw from here. He'd like He's to throw. Got a He'd like to throw. There it is. Can he pin him? No. Like I said, it'd be a victory for Farkas if he doesn't get pinned right here. Three point near fall. Now that's 18 to three. I believe that's it. That's it. That's a technical fall. Technical fall in three minutes and 38 seconds. So at five points to the Iowa score, it's 30 to 11 in favor of the Hawkeyes over Arizona State. They did better than they did in the national duels meeting between these two teams. Part of that may be that uh, Arizona State was missing a man at a weight, and they moved a few people up, but still, this is a good team. No matter which one I'm talking about. Well, uh, yeah, and uh, Hawkeyes, uh, they came through with some real key wins, but I know Coach Leroy Smith's a very philosophical guy, and uh, I'm sure he's pretty philosophical about tonight. There were some positives for him. Well, he's going to wrestle uh, 
One day's time away, Iowa State. So it's a tough trip for the Sun Devils. That's Dan Gable. With one of the Steiners, can't tell which one with his back to us there. But uh, as they leave today, we saw Troy Steiner for the first time on college wrestling series at 134 pounds. And Lincoln McElroy for the first time in college wrestling at 142. And well, that, for the first time period. That's gonna be uh, an interesting situation to see how that comes out. At uh, that weight, with Lincoln McElravey, who obviously was a little nervous, I think. You know, he needed to win one to get his and speaking of, situation. And speaking of nervous, I don't think Dan Gable will be anything but nervous until he's at the NCAA and has an insurmountable lead. <laughs> but that's why he's so great. Well, we're going to uh, wrap up this one here. 30 to 11, there were a couple of falls in there. One of the big ones was at 158 pounds.